Kia ora. In today's module, we're talking about a very important tool in your strategic planning, the SWOT analysis. Is the name a bit jargony? Well, yeah, it is a wee bit, but don't let that put you off. This is a tool I really like. It's easy to do. And it's an exercise I really want you to do. It's one page, like the best strategic documents. So all you need is a pen and a paper or the template I've attached, and it will take you no time at all, but give you a wealth of insight into your business. January is all about strategically planning here at Business for Better. You probably should have done it last year, but that's okay. Being proactive rather than reactive is the goal here. This is something that can be really hard for entrepreneurs because you use so much time working in your business, feeling like your business is an extension of yourself, that it can be really hard to see all the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the glory, and so on. So the key takeaways in this module are very simple. We're going to talk about what a SWOT is, when to use it, and how to use it. So first things first, what is a SWOT analysis? All it is is helps you identify your business's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, hence the name. So your strengths are basically what you are really good at. What do you have internally that is better than your competitors? It could be a strong brand that customers recognize when have positive associations with, or it could be a high level of skill and experience in your team, a healthy financial position with strong cash flow and annual debt, innovative products, it could be a multitude of things. This typically is internal, what is within your business. Every business is unique and there are so many ways you can excel, so you will have multiple strengths. I promise, even if you don't feel like it, you will. But you need to be specific and focus on what you're really good at. I don't want to see a long list of good. I want to see a good focused list of things you are very good at. Weaknesses. We all have them. This is not an exercise in self-flagellation, rather honesty and acceptance. There is nothing wrong with having weaknesses. And weaknesses can be turned into opportunities. We'll talk about that in a moment. So what internal factors will be hurting your performance or putting you at a disadvantage to your competitors? So a common one for us in the early stage of starting a business is resources. If it's just you or your pre-revenue or just starting to make sales, you simply don't have the people or the cash flow that established brands do. Other areas of weaknesses could be lack of brand recognition, inefficient operations, uh, dependence on a single supplier, which can be obviously quite a problem. There, again, are plenty of others. Again, I don't want a list of everything you could be doing better because you'd never stop writing it. We, none of us are perfect. So if we did that, we'd be here all day. Be really specific about the things that are holding you back on achieving the things you want to achieve. Look back at your planner on a page to understand what it is you actually want to achieve this year. Now let's talk about opportunities. These tend to be a little bit more external to you and your team and your business. So what are the external factors or situations that you could use to your benefit? So this is things like new markets, you could explore export, there could be a distributor who's chasing you, there could be a new technology that is enabling product innovation or process improvement or cost reduction and partnerships and so on and so forth. There are plenty of things that may apply to your business. So start by thinking broadly about what's in your external environment. How could you interact with it to grow? Think big. Then, like a broken record, what are we going to do? We're going to get really specific and identify the top few that you actually want to take advantage of. Don't just write opportunities for the sake of it. Then we have threats. Threats are exactly the same, except the opposite. Threats are external issues that pose potential risk to your business. So an obvious one is competition. The other ways customers could be solving their problems without turning to your products, those that already exist and those that will inevitably be introduced. There is so much outside of our control and many potential threats are ones we don't even yet know about. I mean, a really good example would be COVID. But maintaining our awareness that lows are inevitable and planning for them as best as we can really does help. So you think about the cost of living. If you have a higher cost product, is that potentially a threat to you? What if your regulations and your industry are changing and is that going to be a threat to you? Think of these as a starting point. In my experience, people find it a lot easier to write the negatives about their business, and I find that a little bit sad. So I really want you to be try and be as unbiased as possible. And when you've gone and done this, go and work with people who know your business, probably not as well as you do, whether it's your team, whether it's your supporters, advisors, whoever, and get them to help. We did this as a group mentoring session just last week, and the number of additions the other mentees had for each other's businesses were amazing, mostly along the strengths line, because we typically are bad at identifying what we're good at. So work with other people to help you build this. Next up is when to use a SWOT analysis. Well, if you're in a business for better community or you're a business mentee and starting a business, you should do a SWOT analysis. That was a short segment, wasn't it? No, in all seriousness, 
If you're starting a business, it's essential to understand where you sit in the market, the competition and your internal capabilities. And this is a very simple way of doing that. There's no need to waste loads of time creating pages and pages of nonsense. Another time to do it is anytime you're in a planning phase, like your annual strategy planning. Like any strategy tool, it is not a one and done. Business changes constantly and the tools you create to guide your business should be updated accordingly. This is another advantage of keeping your planning documents short and simple because you're updating one page with more than 40 and guess it's probably more likely to read. Another time is before entering a new market. Treat every export avenue as a unique opportunity. Australia and Aotearoa are not the same. It's always a good idea to do a SWOT per geography. If you're facing a specific problem, a SWOT can help identify the root causes and develop targeted solutions. If there's a change in your leadership or your management, if you're bringing in a high level position or if you're totally changing your team structure, it's an interesting way to see what someone external to your team thinks about your business. So let them create their own before reviewing together. Financial challenges in hard economic times, a lull in sales or a planned opportunity falls through, Whatever happens, it's scary, overwhelming, get your thoughts in one place and evaluate your strategy in the context of your financial situation. It helps you plan your next steps. It also helps you again focus on those opportunities you may have forgotten about in your panic and the strengths that you have. So how do you do it? This is the easy bit. Print the template attached. I encourage you to do this by hand because I find writing this down quite therapeutic. Set aside some time where you won't be distracted and set your timer for 30 minutes. That's all it takes. Then just free write. No judgment, no second guessing, no thinking about what other people will think about what you've written, no underestimating your strengths. And if you have a co-founder or a team you want to do this with, do this on your own first. Then put it away. Go away, do something else. You've heard me say this before about a plan on a page because then I want you to come back to it again in a few days because you'll be in a different mindset, you'll be in a different headspace. New things will have popped up. You'll add things, you'll make changes and then sit with your key team members and discuss. Hopefully, for the most part, you're on the same page. Apologies for that pun. And you can create a one chaired page to guide your planning and decisions. And if you're not, well, that's where good leadership comes in. So there you have it, a SWOT analysis in 10 minutes. It really is a useful tool. I recommend you give it a go. If you wanna do it differently to how I've suggested, then fine. But this is something I find very useful to do because as an entrepreneur, particularly if you are the only founder, you will so often underestimate your strengths and consider your threats so much larger than they are in comparison to your opportunities. Jot them down, evaluate them, and have a really good unbiased look at where your business sits. And you might think, oh, I'd forgotten about that opportunity. I will go and pursue it. Or, oh, that weakness of mine is an opportunity to go and do something better. I promise you, it is absolutely one of the most useful tools you can have when it comes to planning your next year in business. As always, you can head to the Business Review Facebook group to go and have a chat about this and more.